How you doing? My name is Alan Rucker. I'm a registered nurse and also a paramedic with over 20 years experience in the medical field. Now, in this video, we're going to go over the different waveform of the ECG tracing. All right. Now, the P wave represents sodium. This is when fast sodium channels open up. All right. Then they close. As soon as they open, sodium rushes inside a cell. Potassium rushes out. Then you get this depolarization. So this is atrial depolarization. When we look at the QRS complex, right? And technically, the QT interval, this tells us calcium. So when slow calcium channels open up, we get ventricular depolarization, we get a QRS complex. Now when we look at the T wave, we look at potassium, right? So this is when the sodium potassium pump now is working and potassium is being pumped back into the cell and sodium is being pumped back out of the cell and the heart is going to its resting potential, right? It's resting phase. So this is repolarization. When we look at an ST, this is what's known as ventricular systole here. Right? So this whole ST segment let me write that clearer for you. Sometimes we make mistakes too. The ST segment contains ventricular systole. This also could be an indication if a patient has a heart attack if this is elevated. But I'll go into that in another video to show you the easy way to be a ST segment elevation versus ST segment depressions. All right? So this is it. P wave, sodium, the QT interval, right? Let's you know calcium the t wave lets you know is potassium so even on the ekg tracing we could tell electrolyte imbalances okay tall t waves hyperkalemia too much potassium low flat t waves hypokalemia right not enough potassium right if we got wider qt intervals we could tell that a patient's hypocalcemic not enough calcium when the QT interval is real tight, sometimes it's, it's, it's shorter than what it should be, too, too tight, too close, then we can say it's hypercalcemia. You also have to check the electrolyte levels, right? The ionized calcium, you know, the potassium and the sodium. But if you look at the P wave, right, we got sodium. And sometimes we can look at this, if the P wave is big, sometimes we can say, well, you know, the P wave the patient might have hypernatremia, slow hyponatremia, all right? And diaphasic P waves are a little different because they can't tell you atrial, left atrial hypertrophy versus sometimes a large P wave can also tell you uh, right atrial hypertrophy, all right? That'd be in another video because I don't want to confuse too many people. But this is just a basic gist. P wave, atrial depolarization, QRS, is ventricular repolarization, ST segment, we use have ventricular systole. Then we have T wave, which is the repolarization, and it's the potassium, right, level. So the potassium going back from the blood back into the cell, and the sodium being kicked back out of the cell, back into the bloodstream, all right? So thank you for watching. Check the comment section, you can see, sorry, the description section, all right? I made two mistakes, sue me. But check the description section and you will also see how to contact us. Thank you for watching.